Okay, this is the fourth video for chapter 10, uh, which talks about molecular shapes. And the previous video, I introduced uh, carbon monoxide, um, and we came up with a, a Lewis structure that looks like this for carbon monoxide. And then I had indicated that there's something special about this. Um, and so let me tell you what, what is special about this. But I'm actually going to uh, redraw a couple of other structures that we came up with uh, already. So very quickly, I'm going to draw ammonia. And I'm going to draw carbon dioxide. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, starting with these bottom two, I'm going to introduce you to a concept called formal charge. Formal charge, it has some, well, it has some uh, kind of an, uh, an analog to uh, oxidation number, which we talked about several chapters ago. But it's completely, it, it's totally different. But it's a way of actually making an assessment, making a judgment about whether or not the Lewis structure you just came up with, that you just drew, is valid or not, or is actually a good representation of what the molecule really looks like when you, when, when you look at it down at, at the molecular level. Okay. So formal charge goes like this. Um, for every atom that you've drawn in your Lewis structure, um, you count up the, I'm going to start with carbon dioxide first. You count up how many electrons it brings to the party, its own number of valence electrons. And then you compare that with the number of electrons that it contributes in the Lewis structure. Okay, so look at carbon dioxide. Carbon, if you remember, has four valence electrons. Okay, and when you look at uh, the, the, this structure that we drew, the, this, the Lewis structure for carbon dioxide, um, carbon contributed one of these pairs and one of these pairs and one of these pairs and one of these pairs. So it actually contributes in this structure, four. So it actually has the correct number, the, the exact number of valence electrons that the atom itself uh, contributes. Okay. So what we say that in this case then is that carbon has a formal charge of zero. Okay. Meaning it actually has four electrons to contribute and the, 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 the number of electrons around it happens to uh, be exactly that. Now, Another way of calculating this, I think the book actually describes it, is that for every bond, bonding uh, electron, you take half of those. So in this case, there's a double bond here. Car carbon contributes half of those two pair electrons, meaning two of them, and half of this two pair of electrons, meaning two more of them. That's why we get four. Okay? And then if you look at oxygen, each oxygen atom contributes, back here, six valence electrons each. Look at each oxygen in this depiction. Uh, the oxygen uh, contributes the lone pairs, two, four, and then half of the bonding pairs, which is another two. And so that's six for this one, and for this one, two, four, half of the bonding ones, six for that one, each exactly six. So in carbon dioxide, in the Lewis structure that I drew for carbon dioxide here, the uh, oxygen atoms also have a formal charge of zero. That is, uh, that is always desirable. In fact, whenever you write a Lewis structure out where each atom has a uh, full octet and each of the atoms has a formal charge of zero, you can be very sure that you've drawn a, a really good uh, Lewis structure depiction of that molecule. Now, there may be other resonance forms that, that, uh, that also have a full octet and uh, zero formal charges. In fact, benzene was a good example of that. So there may be resonance forms, you know, additional resonance forms, but you can be sure that each of those resonance forms that, that, that uh, satisfies those two things, full octet on each atom and a formal charge of zero on each atom is a, a valid and very stable uh, resonance form uh, of, of depicting that molecule. Let's look at nitrogen, at ammonia in the same way. Uh, ammonia, uh, nitrogen, has five valence electrons and hydrogen has one. Okay, and if you look at ammonia here, each of the hydrogens con contributes half of the bonding pair. That's one. So each hydrogen has a formal charge of zero. Okay, 
and nitrogen has a lone pair, that's two, and then it contributes one each of the single bonds, so it's two, three, four, five, that's also correct. So nitrogen in, in the ammonia molecule, or at least in this depiction, also has a formal charge of zero. So we can be very sure that the Lewis structure that we drew for ammonia is also correct. It has a full octet around each atom, with of course the exception of hydrogen having just the two electrons, and each of the atoms in the molecule has a formal charge of zero. Now I want to go back to carbon monoxide. That's why I wanted to do this by way of, of introduction to show that the easy examples that we kind of did in the earlier videos um, have nice, stable, uh, completely valid Lewis uh, structures. Let's look at carbon monoxide. All right, so uh, this was the Lewis structure we came up with carbon monoxide before. And uh, again, each uh, atom involved here has a full octet. But now let's actually calculate the formal charge uh, for, uh, for each of the atoms here. So first of all, let's look at carbon. Carbon, if you remember, has four uh, valence electrons. But the number of electrons that we're depicting here in this Lewis structure is two for the lone pair, and then one each for these bonds. So two plus one, two, three makes five. So here, we're, we're, in this depiction, carbon is showing up as having five electrons. But it only has, it only contributes four from, you know, the, from, from an atomic standpoint. So essentially carbon has a formal charge of negative one in this depiction. Okay, well now let's look at oxygen. Oxygen, uh, oxygen contributes six electrons from its atom. And the way we've depicted this, the oxygen uh, 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 atom has one, two, three, four, five, uh, five electrons, but oxygen contributes six. So the way we've depicted this, oxygen has a formal charge of plus one. So in, in, this, uh, in this depiction, in this Lewis structure depiction of carbon monoxide, um, it's still probably the correct, well, it is, yeah, but we might say this is probably still the correct representation of carbon monoxide even though the formal charges on the two atoms aren't exactly zero. They add up to zero, which, uh, which we expect, <laughs> otherwise we would have lost an electron somewhere, but uh, it adds up to, to zero, but, neither, but, uh, but each atom has kind of a, uh, a, a charge, so, you know, it's almost like a little, uh, a mini charge with, uh, within the atom. Because, you know, again, if you think about this now down at the atomic level, uh, carbon, uh, just thinking about it at, 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 uh, at, uh, from an atom perspective, is surrounded by uh, uh, eight uh, full octet of electrons. But, uh, but looking at, at, at each of the bonds as, as though carbon contributed electron to the bond, carbon is contributing five electrons in this depiction which is more than it has, okay? Um, now again, this is all, uh, it is one of these things where this is kind of just a model, it's a representation, but this is a useful tool for us to use is that whenever we end up doing, following this little formula and coming up with, uh, with numbers that are not zero, it's a warning that perhaps our depiction is not the best one, okay? Now, I'm gonna show you another example of this and, and it's a, it's, it, it's an interesting example. It, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a difficult one, but I think it's worth going through. How am I doing on time? Whew. I better do it on another video because it's probably going to take a while. So I'm going to do a depiction of an, uh, another, I'm going to start with another problem, and I'm going to show uh, how we make an assessment about which resonance form is, is, the, is the best. So I end this one.